Hello, 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 good evening. How are we all? It's uh, it's that time of the week again, it's Tuesday night, yes. And uh, we're about 30 seconds to 9 o'clock. Just having a look in chat, see who's in there. You're about 30 seconds behind me, well I'm 30 seconds in front of you. So I'm just looking, uh, we've got uh, we've got Sputz and Rob and Chief and Jeff and Miles and Fuzzy Ann and Az and Tom and Leanna and John and Mike. Hello, I hope you're all well and... Um, fine and dandy on this dark and horrible cold almost October night yes evening 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 yes you can all see me which is good um, we are just on nine o'clock so um, let me just uh, tell you I've got him <laughs> him with me again <laughs> um, so uh, we're gonna have a bit of a sting and then we're gonna go into the show yes Now, yes, it is just gone nine o'clock on Tuesday the 29th of September 2015. And this, my dear viewers, our, our dear viewers, is the 131st edition of Vapor Scene here on Vapor Trails TV. The 131st and indeed the very last time you will see Vapor Scene. Um, boo hoo! Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that, Gary? Uh, no, I'm not smiling for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be interesting, isn't it, going forwards? It's uh, it certainly shall be. Yes, but the the format as you see it now, sort of thing, is 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 going. Yeah, uh, it all change and all that. Yeah, this is the uh, I think the fourth type of studio that that I've had. Um, 131 shows, something like. 37 guests, I don't know, something <laughs> like that. Um, I've lost count of how many bits of VT um, that have gone through this production suite uh, and been edited up. Um, and tonight, it being the last show, um, I've decided to have a bit of new stuff. Um, we're not going to be talking about the news tonight. Um, Matt is going to be covering the shenanigans down in Whitehall on tomorrow night show because he's got some BT. Um, but tonight, I'm going to play in some old stuff. Stuff that I've gone through, because I've got every single show's... <laughs> every single show's got a folder. And within each folder is all the bits of VT that's been done. So, I've got some little nuggets that I've pulled out. Yes. Uh, and we're going to have those, as well as some other stuff, after what we like to call, for the very last time, the Vapor Scene Titles. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evade. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. Yes, good evening. I'm, I'm just laughing because we've been watching chat as, as the titles have been playing out there. I've got to tell you a few things. Okay, Yes, Vapor Scene is finishing tonight. Um, and tomorrow night we've got the last episode of The Cave. Dave Dawn and The Haze Hour finished on Thursday and The Old Gits finished last night. Uh, we're not going anywhere. Um, Gary and myself will be taking two weeks off as of tonight um, because I haven't had a, a week off all year. Um, so I'm having a couple of weeks off. When we come back, we're making some changes. That's all it is. We're just making some changes. 
uh, and we've decided to drop the shows in their current format and bring you something new, something different and something that the whole team hope is going to be much better um, for you, for us, for, for everybody really. So no one's going anywhere. We're not going to the BBC, we're not going to DOI SOS <laughs> and they wouldn't have Gary because he's a liability quite frankly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> was so, that on the Pornhub one? <laughs> was that Gary? I said, was that on the uh, on the Pornhub comment or DIY SOS you were talking about? Uh, I, I think both, actually. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, because yeah, you are indeed just a, a liability. A liability. He's yeah. a health and safety liability, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, Vape Charles TV is not. We're not disappearing. We're not going anywhere. We just we've just decided to change a few things. Um, so we've decided to drop all the shows and bring you new shows. So it's all good. You're still going to see the same kind of stuff. You're going to see some different stuff. And hopefully you'll enjoy it much better. Yes. So that, that being aside, I just wanna pl I'm going to play a few things out tonight um, that have tickled me over the years. Uh, and, and this was one of the very first VTs I ever did for Vapor C. Have a little look. This is Frank. He is suffering from the debilitating disease, shiny modiitis syndrome. This is what Frank had to say when we spoke to him. It all started a few months ago when I started vaping. It was all going so well, you know, and I was using a cigar like, but I found I needed more and more. So I bought a screwdriver, and then I bought a screwdriver Mark II. Then it got even worse. I, I got my hands on a Provari. And then I discovered RTAs, RDAs and other rebuildables. I soon progressed on to mixing my own juice. And then I discovered stainless steel mesh. Oh, please help me. I just can't stop myself. For just £2 a month, you can help Frank have a better vaping life. He won't receive photos or letters, but you will see gloating posts on the forums and the discarded mods in the classifieds. You can donate by texting vape to 283-629-015-732. Please give generously. Thank you. There you go. Um, Gary, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, can't stop crying because um, <laughs> yeah, he found sorry. that quite hilarious. Uh, that's one of the early <laughs> things, early skits that I did. Um, oh, that was 2012. Yes, mm. three years ago. Um, in fact, I joined Vectors TV three years ago next month. Yes, uh, and that was kind of on show two or three, I think that was on. But anyway, Gary. Yes. You have been playing with something, and we've got a little bit of VT coming out. Do you want to just introduce oh. it? Yes, it's it's something that can do sort of hard and soft, um, and uh, and that's where I'm going to leave it, I think. But it's good. It, no, it, it's called the uh, the. Um, the Cooper. Cooper. The Cooper. It, it, it's this thing. Um, and I've been mightily impressed thus far. Um, this was an early impressions thing that we sort of did at the weekend. Um, but I, I bought one and rapidly bought another one the day after. Um, one was, was that impressed. And they still continued. We'd talk about that afterwards. Yeah. Here we go. All right, it's me again, um, and I, I just wanted to. Uh, we're going to have, probably have a little chat about uh, about some of this a little bit later. Um, but I've had vape mail. Um, I see a mod on. Uh, was it my pack? Um, this one, and I thought, Do you know, what? I'm going to take a punt. Um, and for the thirty, I think it was thirty-two pounds delivered. Um, that it was. It was a damn good punt indeed. So I thought I'd uh, have a chat. And I've got the uh, the new yoghurt range um, from Strawberry Fields and they are rather epic. Uh, the blueberry, the beach and the strawberry. Um, really, really, really nice liquids. Um, I've got some of those in there. Now I was going to show you an unboxing um, but I, I'm not Carl, um, because I couldn't wait. Um, it's it, it comes in a box like this, as most mods do with destructions and all that. Now, essentially, I think um, I'd have to check. I think it's a, a 60 watt um, temperature controlled 
uh, mod. And it is uh, it's set for titanium and for nickel coils. Um, I'll show you a tiny little bit about that. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest with you. Uh, a 30 quid mod. Um, when it arrived, the, the first one was so damn good, I ordered a second one. Let me just uh, let me just show you my, my first one, um, which was the uh, the silver one. Now it is a bit of a, uh, a fingerprint magnet, I will say. Um, let's start off. There's lots of, uh, of of venting holes on there. Now there is a uh, a USB hole at the bottom, um, but that is not charging. Uh, that is only purely for firmware updates as far as I can see where well, it is because it says on the bottom not charging for updates so you know there potentially are updates coming for this now I don't know about you know what they are or whatever now the, the cover on the back the whole thing is very very solid now there is a little tiny bit of button rattle but it, that for 30 quid it doesn't bother me battery sits in there uh, nice display, upy downy buttons, and a uh, uh, fire button, obviously, and um, you get to your menus this way as well. Like I say, I was so impressed with this one, I went and bought a uh, a black one as well. And in temperature control mode, it seems to be working incredibly well. I've got this one set at temp, and, and this one set at, uh, at just normal wattage, basically. The menu system, it, it took me a little while. Um, to, to work out but once you get there it is incredibly easy um, to understand I will see if I can uh, if I can go down a, a tiny bit and just show you a couple of settings I'm not you know I'm not massively uh, into this the one thing I like about it I got to show you this is brilliant um, at the moment I am I'm set at 600 and you can see on there, I like it hard. <laughs> You've got uh, hard, soft, and normal. Now, I would have preferred a, a semi in the middle rather than a normal, um, because I don't know what normal is. You either like it hard or, you know, it's hard, soft, or it's, it's semi, um, sort of between the two. Now, I think that is, well, it is, is to do with your, your far up. So... Uh, essentially, if you like it hard, it will bang more um, wattage, uh, you know, at the start, or a, a different wattage range compared to soft, compared to uh, to semi or, or medium. Um, the mod itself is quite easy to understand. As I say, you click your button three times, and you can go into your menu. Now, the first one there uh, gives you either temp mode. Whoop, hold on, one, two, three. Uh, temp mode when it comes on temp mode or wattage mode so at the moment we're in temp mode it'll go back to normal and that'll set you can go then to your coils and you have a, a selection of nickel or titanium here you go. temp control now this is where you <coughs> can set if you like it hard soft or norm again I would have loved a semi in there it's really really easy and simple and just nice to use um, it is a you know, it's a 30 quid mod effectively a 30 quid temperature controlled mod that will do nickel and titanium and it has been um, we're probably going to talk a little bit more in depth it's been performing well it's a real solid heavy mod button rattle a couple of things I don't like, um, which I'll show you. Which one of them is uh, is the uh, you know you got this overhang thing going on. It'd be nice. You could have just squared that out. You know, one corner square where you're at is going to sit would have would have made a whole world of difference. Um, but really, that's my only gripe. Um, they don't sit 100% flush. It is a uh, a floaty, springy, um, pinny job in the middle. Um, Apart from that, you know, it is it's a thirty quid temp control mod, and and for what you get and how solid it feels and all that sort of stuff, it's bloody bloody good. Um, I love the silver. I would have got 
two silvers to be honest. Uh, for me, the, the the finish on this is far superior to the black one. So if you're going to get one, get get a silver one, unless you like black. It comes with a um, a, a token mod Johnny, um, as I like to call them. Um, with this one, you get a tango one, and when this is on, um, basically you don't get any of of the button rattle. Let me just see if I can ease my. Is this a hard one? No, I run and just ease that in there. It slides on very nicely. Um, and when that's in, you know, you got yeah, a little bit, but it's very grippy. It's good. It's a good mud journey. Um, the one that comes with the black one is black, and I don't like that at all because you can see in the workshop today, this thing is a dust magnet. It it just attracts everything and it sticks to it. I can't get rid of it. Don't like that. Horrible. Yeah, I like the orange one. The orange one's quite good. But in terms of a temp control, you know, mod, um, you know, I've got the Skelly 75, which has got the uh, the Royal Hunter on top. And this is uh, 50 quid, 30 quid, two of those for the price of one of these. To be honest, this seems to handle um, the, the temp um, control mode far better than this does. Um, it, I can't explain it. Don't know why. It just does. It seems to work um, work better in temp mode than this one. That was a very very quick overview. Now I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more because I know Marco um, also ordered a couple of these, but they vape incredibly well. Very nice. Let's see uh, the strawberry. Uh, a little bit about the strawberry. The strawberry yogurt is um, it's, it's not like a sour yogurt. It's a uh, um, a yogurt, most definitely. But it, it's very very good. So uh, if you've gone off the custards, I think the yogurts are the next next new thing. Um, very nice. Very very good indeed. I'm impressed. Uh, this is why I had to come and tell you how impressed I am. I'm going to hand you back to Mark in the studio where we're probably going to have a little chat about those and, and our findings over the uh, over the past week. Back to Marco in the studio. And there you go. Yes, back to me in the studio. Hello. Um, I do have a silver one as well and it does come out of shop with the orange mod Johnny. Um, and the black one does come with the black one. It's a shame you can't get a black one if you want a black one and you know it comes with whatever. Um, but it's okay. I have to say, I'm actually also rather impressed. Here's a few little slides. First of all, you get the obligatory little scratch and sniff to see if it's genuine, um, and you'll see where it says code. I've oranged it out, because that's my code. Um, but it tells you um, the batch number and the manufacture date, blah, blah, blah. There's a little slide on the um, the stats. 83.8 millimeters high, 41 wide, 23.5 deep, and it weighs 120 grams. It is quite a heavy little item. Um, the output power, 1 to 60 watts, uh, and a resistance of 0.06 to 2 in temperature control mode, and 0.1 to 3 in variable wattage mode. Um, and the capacity, 2600 milliamp hour, that's obviously the U18650. Um, and finally, there you go, that is a little menu description. So you've got the temperature and wattage mode, then you've got the nickel or titanium coil selector and um, the the three temperature norm soft and hard and as you can see there on soft it goes from 60 to 40 watts from norm it goes to 6 to 50 and then from hard it goes 6 to 60. Uh, you can also do your screen time um, how many puffs I don't know people how many look at that these days um, and you can also change your screen direction left or right plus you can slightly adjust the uh, the nickel range the uh, the resistance range on the nickel coils Gary back to you yes I was trying to I was trying to work out the nickel thing um, and apparently so you can adjust it on startup yeah. I don't know I don't know how that works um, I'm gonna play I've got some nickel coils on order and I'll, I'll be playing with, uh, with with some of those at some point but apparently this this also has um, what I've seen some people describe as almost a a, a 4x4 type drive system um, yes yeah which I, I don't get um, 
I will confess, I, I, I don't get it. But I, I have noticed that the, like I say, it seems to handle, I mean, to be fair, I, I don't think um, anything I've got handles wattage like the, uh, or, or any, handles anything like the DNA 40. That's a, a personal view. Everything I chuck at the DNA 40, it just does and adjusts and works and, you know, you, you, you can screw that on. I, I can change it to, uh, you know, I can take a, a temp control off, put a, uh, a standard coil on and, and it just auto adjusts and does it all, you know, does it on the fly rather than pressing buttons. But these for 30 quid are <laughs> bloody good. I think, <laughs> yeah, for the, for the price, um, yeah. you've, you've got to give them their G for the price. I bought two, oh, yeah. just under 60 yeah. quid delivered because it's free delivery from where we got it from. Um, the link to the Cooper site uh, will go into chat um, and you can have a look at the whole spiel, uh, spiel um, on, the, on the unit itself. Um, it, is, it is rather nice and I do agree with Gary, it'd be nice to have just had the 510 connection slightly over so it was completely on the mod as opposed to just slightly hanging over, little <laughs> niggles. Um, the button rattle, mine doesn't really rattle that much, it's not that bad i got to say. Um, the only other thing for me is the USB port at the bottom. You yeah. can't charge. If you could charge, it'd make it so much better. Um, but I bought these to replace the curves. Both the curves have died, um, which is a, a, a bit of an annoyance, I have to say. Uh, I'm going to be taking one apart. I might film it. Um, I might not. Um, I'm going to take one apart, see if I can get it to work. Um, we're going to go to the first set of ads. Uh, but before we do, here's a quick word from Dave Dawn. Buzzword of the week with Dave Dawn. Dave, what do you think of the Nicara inhalators? The shite. Thanks, Dave. Buzzword. Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and pure perfection e liquids. And indeed, welcome back to part two of the last ever vapor scene here on Vapor Trails TV. <laughs> um, we've done a lot of things over the last three years um, and I've got a few little stings that we've been, we've used in the past. Um, do you remember this one?
Yes, the Twitter bomb that uh, Andy Sutton was doing on his Saturday show. Uh, and then we followed it up with something else on Tuesdays. But do you remember what it was? Twitter bomb. Retweet. <laughs> the old retweet uh, where we, uh, we tweeted again those people that we wanted to get the attention of. This is way back um, when the TPD was first announced and we were doing so much um, to uh, try and raise, raise awareness of everything going on. Um, do you remember those, Gary? Yeah, I do. It, it's, it, it doesn't seem that long ago, though, does it? it it's, it's gone so quickly. Um, I mean, I don't know how long I've been here, but uh, I how long have I been here? It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, at least uh, a year, I would say. On Vaporcine? Yeah. Uh, about a year last October, I think. It, it's got to be, isn't it? Which, yeah. Which, which, is, which is bonkers. Um, and, yeah, and obviously prior to that, the show with, with Mark. Um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, been a, it's been a long old journey. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, development's going forward. It, it's only going to have a, a nice little uh, refresh and, uh, and, and much freshness, etc., etc going forwards. Yes, uh, and the old Twitter, the Twitter bomb campaign was followed up with something else, uh, which was this. Yes, you've got mail. Uh, we went on from Twitter because so many of us have got um, Twitter bans <laughs> for tweeting so much. We went on to emails, uh, and then uh, we got we got some we got some people to change. But there was one person that was never going to change. Who was that? Yes, it was her. And you know, nobody will change my mind on that. Good old Glennis. <laughs> It's like a trip down memory lane, this show. It certainly is. Um, I've got a little bit of a trip down memory lane in part three. Um, Dave K. And it's quite poignant even today than it was then. Um, so I'm going to stick that in a little bit later on. Um, but uh, before we go to the next bit of VT from Gary, here's another word from Dave Dawn. Buzzword of the week with Dave Dawn. You need to push it in slightly with your finger. Buzzword of the week with Dave Dawn. You've got to push it in slightly with your finger. Yes. <laughs> that was one of Dave's Davisms on the Haze Hour of the previous week, uh, which I nicked and put on the show. But anyway, back to Gary. He's, got, he's done a lot of VT this week. I've been trawling through my archives, um, but Gary's been doing the work. Um, tell me what you've got for us now, Gary. I got my big one out this weekend, didn't I? Um, I most definitely got the uh, the biggest tool and the most scariest tool in the workshop out, and and another new tool. Um, yeah, and I've started. We started doing some bits with the uh, with the stand, and uh, and over the, uh, the the next couple of weeks, I shall be uh, hopefully cracking the back of it. Um, but yes, we're finally starting to make some some cuts with the bandsaw um, and uh, I was wearing a nappy through the entire process. Uh, just shows your hands? They're, they're all there. They're, hey! they're, they're still all there. <laughs> He's got all his fingers. Here we go. So we're back in the room once again and uh, this week I'm going to be uh, getting dirty with some tools. Um, the wife isn't on hand to, uh, to, to give me a hand this week. Um, but basically what I've done is, is laid out. I'm going to go for a round. Now I don't know how this is going to work out but I'm going for a round. <laughs> it could get messy. Um, probably not going to film much on the bandsaw um, because I need to concentrate. But... I'm going to get that set up, um, cut it out, and then we've got new tools to show you. But just to show you roughly where we were looking at um, and where we're going, uh, I think I'm going to have to have a flat edge on, on one of these. And all I've done is basically got a bowling and 
and vent if he's out. Drawn round Sid Bell. Um, now, obviously, we're going to be away for a couple of weeks after after this week, um, and uh, and then we'll be back. Um, so it give me a chance to crack on with some of this. What I intend to do um, is basically my 18650 is going to go in here, hence the, the flat edge um, there. So I've got an 18650 going in there. I'm going to cut some of the alley uh, to form a, uh, a bit there, form a screen um, and me, me knobs and all of that sort of stuff to, to go into. So I'm going to pop away, go over to the bandsaw. Um, look, I know people were saying about that last week. Uh, it was a mock-up. Um, it was a mock-up with a duff battery just to see how it all worked. Um, it wasn't. It's not going to be wired like this. You'll see when we get down to doing the wiring. But basically, that was a mock-up. Okay, I'll clear that now if you didn't understand. And yes, there was lots of wires and bits and pieces in the way. And somebody mentioned about uh, affecting the resistance. It, it's hardly anything, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the the, the atties were reading on here pretty much what they're reading on uh, on every device. Um, you know, uh, with within a point one or something. You know, so it, it, it's even with that all the wires in place, uh, and it'll be restricted um, when they go in here, um, and there'll be a much higher gauge. Uh, but it didn't really affect it that much, to be honest with you. So, gonna pop away. Start getting this cut out, and, uh, and we'll show you a new tool in a little bit. Right, so we're over at the uh, the bandsaw. Um, I'm just going to set this up, um, and then I will do uh, some cuts. Now, I have been playing, and I, I've been playing with rounds and this, that, and the other, and I've been talking to uh, uh, to various people on bandsaws and all this sort of stuff. What I need to do is um, twist my little knob and just bring my um, guard right down roughly to the depth of that wood and then I'll just tighten that off. Now this is going to give me, it gives you room to, to work with and play with. Now I'm going to start taking some chunks of this out and I'm probably going to go down here. I haven't got the uh, guard in because I'm doing a round. Now I'm not going to get it perfectly round but I'll get it close enough that when we go over to, to Noodle um, we'll be able to sort of finish that off. Now I'm not speaking with uh, Masks on this set any other. Um, I do have it on. Mm. I can't even do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Um, I'm going to power this up. Start cutting. And we'll come back in a bit. I need to concentrate on this. I don't want to be talking and filming and all that sort of stuff while I'm doing it. I'll be back in two. Right, so we've, we've done our first cut. It's not bad if I dare so. yeah, say so myself. Um, yeah, I'm being really careful. We've got a uh, first round, and it was, it was quite close. Um, I'm impressed with myself. Uh, I'm going to flatten this off, but I will do that on other tool. Uh, let me uh, crack on and uh, try and get the rest of it done. Back into... round round I'm impressed with that um, yeah a few somebody was telling me about doing uh, relief cuts and stuff now there are bits around here that will all finish up and all that but I have a uh, a, a nice round I'm just gonna take a little uh, flat bit off um, and then we'll we'll go over to the other tool I'll be back in two exciting stuff look at that I'm impressed with it look, it's a round and everything <laughs> right into right so we're over to uh, to new tool 2 um, which is a um, sanding jobby doofer uh, it has a big uh, belty out that uh, sandy thing here um, that you sand stuff with and on the side um, it has one with a slimy thing and a, a big disky so I'm going to be using the uh, the, the disc um, now we'll just spin this round it's done so it's really stable on this wood. Um, just take that out of the way. And basically I can work this on the sander. Now it's going to get incredibly, incredibly, incredibly dusty. 
Now I should have the extraction in here, so I'm not going to feel much, but I'll just give you an idea of, uh, of where we go. And I'm just going to flatten off this edge first and take out some of the um, uh, relief cut markings that we've done. This will have a final sand, so this is just a, a rough uh, shape up to get out some of the uh, some of the bits. So, excuse me one second, I should turn this on. is uh, get my mask on and get the dust extraction on this <laughs> because it just spews it out it really does spew it out I will be back in two So there we go, we are back in the room once again. Um, and I'm well impressed with the circle. It's the little things, please, little minds and all that. But um, it's starting to uh, starting to take shape now, which is good. Um, next stage is, obviously we're gonna be away for a couple of weeks. Um, I've got some uh, little routing bits. Now, I've got a, a drill bit, which is big enough uh, to, to drill straight out for um, the ATI connection to go in. Um, what I'm going to be looking at doing is uh, drilling uh, in the side here um, for the 510. Now that, not the 510, you donkey, for the uh, for this thing. But yeah, I'm going to be drilling out <laughs> this, this big hole um, to get right. Now, that's going to be fun um, and probably dangerous. I've got a flat edge tiny little flat edge just so I can get that um, sort of flush on and in um, I'm going to be making the um, screen housing with the uh, with the alley so we're going to have to route out this section here um, to uh, take the screen um, what I'll probably do I don't know we'll, we'll film that that will be that will be filmed and we'll show you once I've got the recess here for where on the screen, um, so the screen's going to sit here and then we're going to have our fire button and we're going to have our main on off switch. I've got to get some depth on there. Um, all of the, the wiring will be done on the other side. So effectively once I've got this drilled, this drilled, I'll do a, a small hole through um, to take the, the wires. Uh, this will be routed and again I'll do a, a small hole through to take the wires. On the back, <clears throat> what, what I'll be doing then, where my bits come through, um, is to route out small little inserts and holes and channels for taking all the wires on, on the base. The base will then be uh, filled back and um, and some sort of a uh, uh, furry uh, stuff, stuff, furry stuff will be going uh, on the bottom. But I'm impressed. It turned out quite well in the end. Um, I've got all of my uh, me sort of little relief cutty bits I did uh, to, to get rid of. My first round, proper round on, on the bandsaw. I do, seriously, I know we, we were looking at um, the uh, when we are on the sandy thing um, and, and that generates so much dust, it is incredible. Um, as well as wearing the, as you've seen, the proper um, face and eye protection. Um, you can't skimp on safety, really. 
when you're messing with stuff like this. Um, and seeing as I'm doing such a good job now on my lungs with uh, with with the e-cigs, um, I don't want to damage them. So a proper uh, dust mask. Um, and this one is uh, right down. This this actually protects against vapors as well. Now I need that because at some point we're going to be uh, casting um, out of a, a coloured acrylic um, our screen. Uh, so all of that stuff is coming up. So yes, I'm going to cut a hole here. Then I've got to cut a hole in the alley. And, and what we'll do is actually cast a, uh, a screen um, in, into the alley uh, with some resin. Um, which we can colour, whatever colour we like, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be fun, much fun. So I will leave you with that now. Um, I'm going to go away and uh, try and work out exactly how big I want this, how big I need it, um, and then get me alley cut. All of that will be coming up um, when we come back. Uh, after a couple of weeks. So I've got two weeks now to play and start routing, drilling and, and filming which is good fun. So I will put you back to Mark Renner's studio. I know it's this is going to be a long-winded one, but there's quite a lot. Um, it's, it's quite involved. I could have probably done it in an afternoon, but I don't get much time to, to sort of film over the weekends. Um, I'll leave you with that. Back to Mark Renner's studio. Um, we now have a round bit of wood and, and an idea. Catch you later. So there you go, that was the last ever episode <laughs> of MFT on Vapor Scene, but not on Vapor Charles TV. No, where were you not modding friends? Um, <laughs> Gary will be back um, with the rest of the VT that follows on that particular build um, when we start the other things. More will become apparent um, when we do a little show to tell you what's going on. Yes, um, we'll be back after these words from our sponsors we will see you in two vapor scene is proudly sponsored by health evape uk purveyor of e-cigarettes and pure perfection e-liquids Vapors. Dripper just got 40% bigger. So if you love discovering new e-liquids, tell Dripper what flavours you like and we'll send you 70ml of juice and at least 5 flavours. With a money back guarantee and free delivery anywhere in Europe, dripper.co.uk What's in this e-cig cloud? Harmless water vapour, right? Pretty much, yes. Compared to a lit cigarette, it's much safer than smoke. But it contains nicotine. And nicotine on its own isn't toxic and doesn't cause cancer. If you're worried about switching to vapour, here are some facts. No tar, no smoke, no burnt tobacco. Cooking your evening meal produces more toxins than are found in exhaled vapour. Tobacco smoke contains toxins at very high levels, and vapour does not. And that vapour contains 6,000 times less carcinogens than cigarette smoke. Electronic cigarette vapour. There's nothing to be frightened of. The only dangerous electronic cigarette is a banned one. And now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is sponsored by Healthy Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquids.
And as Mr. Deeply would say, we are back in the room. Hello. Um, so Gary, tell me, yes. tell the viewers Where what, we going? They, what they can expect the next time they see that particular <laughs> thing, what you is making me. Probably about eight fingers, to be honest with you. Um, no, no, no more uh, power tools. Well, there are, there are power tools in there. I'm, I'm going to be uh, planning to um, get the uh, alley cut on this thing here, uh, which is a little uh, the fret saw. Um, screen done, mounted. I'm going to attempt to cast my own resin screen. Um, so it means you can you can sort of choose a colour, dear boy, seeing as that's going to you in the end. Uh, so I'm going to cast a, a screen into the alley, um, which should be interesting, um, and uh, and get all the routing done, all the finishing done, and finally get it all working. I reckon I've got probably if I speed things up um, about four weeks. It's a long old process because it's everything's sort of hand done, if you know what I mean. Um, and I'm not full time on it. I'm literally dropping that project to work on other things and then coming back to that every weekend. So I've got to sort of pick up, get my mind in the right place and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'd, hopefully, next couple of weeks that, that we have uh, as, as um, holiday, um, mm -hmm. I won't be boozing it up at the weekends. I shall be, uh, I'll be cracking on and, and try and crack the back of that so we can have a, uh, a, a sort of a working um, thing, hopefully. <laughs> I can't promise anything. I don't know. It's you know when you make something, it's one of those things, isn't it? You, I I could put that in <laughs> this thing that I now have a round chunk of wood. Basically, I could put that in the uh, in the start milling it out, and it fly and split in half and have to start again. I don't know. That's one of the wonders of making stuff by hand. You just don't know until it's done. Basically, very true. I just like to point out that you already have eight fingers and two thumbs. Uh, yeah, well, I don't really. So I, I've got I've got seven working fingers. Um, that one doesn't work. Well, your <laughs> that, point, that, it's a good point. It's a pointy it, finger. It, it, it does that. Yeah, that that's the one that that um, many 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 moons ago, um, using uh, a cheap Chinese tool, I cut through all the tendons on and had to have them all redone and stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, making box mods. Um, so uh, I'm that's why I have a sort of a box mod um, phobia um, when it comes to power tools. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be worse. Now listen, I've got another. another I've got quite a lot of VT actually that I pulled from the archives, um, but the one that I I think I'm going to play out um, is something that I asked Dave Kitson to do for me for the show. Uh, and it was him talking about his vaping journey and seeing as we've gone so far now with the TPD and everything that's been going on I thought this was actually quite a good little bit of VT. It's fantastically shot as usual with Dave, um, wonderfully edited uh, and it is quite poignant. Yeah, watch all the way through. We'll see you on the flip side. I bought my first electronic cigarette on the 4th of September 2010. Unlike a lot of people, uh, I bought mine more out of curiosity rather than through some desire to quit smoking. Uh, I know now, uh, by talking to people on forums and at vape meets, that a lot of people tried various NRT treatments and various methods to quit smoking and had very little success with that and now look at electronic cigarettes as something that helped them quit. In my case though, uh, the deciding factor, uh, the reason that I actually parted with my 25 quid that day at the little barrow in the shopping mall, uh, was the convenience of this thing. Um, I a legal like thing like most people start with. Uh, I tried it, uh, it seemed okay 
and um, I remember as I walked away thinking that um, you know maybe I'd smoke a few less cigarettes it wasn't a huge concern of mine at the time um, but the, uh, the, the the main reason I got it was it would be a lot more practical I work as an IT consultant uh, which involves working on client sites quite a lot of the time and sometimes uh, just nipping out for a cigarette uh, can be a bit awkward so I figured um, this could be useful for that and it was and it'd be better uh, in the car so I thought what the hell I'll give it a go after a couple of weeks or so of using this little cigar like uh, I became aware of two things um, first one was that the kit wasn't really hacking it for me I needed something with a longer battery life and something that gave me a little bit of a better hit but I also started to notice that I was feeling um, a lot more energetic um, I'm a keen walker um, and I started to find that I could work, walk for longer uh, I was out of breath a lot less often um, and I was enjoying the walking a lot more than I did um, you couple that with the fact that I didn't feel like a social outcast half the time when I wanted to spark up a cigarette and the lack of smoke, smell and the litter caused when you're walking uh, you know disposing of a nub end is always a bit of a dilemma um, and just my general quality of life was a lot better um, I got the Reva kit and I really haven't looked back since Well, although uh, vaping has uh, certainly increased my lung capacity and uh, initially made me a lot fitter than I was when I smoked, um, I think 19 months of a beer and schnitzel diet in Munich have undone a lot of that because it's been quite difficult, quite hard work, especially lugging this camera. <laughs> so I'm just having a little rest in the vape. Once a couple of years ago, we filmed a review on a wall just over there with um, a GGTB, if I remember rightly. And uh, it's a nice spot. I shall be coming here more often now I'm back in the UK. Many of the people I speak to these days who've successfully made the switch from smoking cigarettes to using electronic cigarettes or vaping um, tend to want to share that experience with people and I was no exception. Uh, very quickly after I started vaping I set up the Happy Vapor blog uh, which is still running today although it doesn't get as much attention as it probably deserves. Um, in many ways this it was at that point that that really was the start of my vaping journey to be honest uh, obviously now I'm a moderator of the UK Vapors Forum I'm quite active with uh, vape meets and what have you I like to get together with people and swap stories and uh, try out hardware and e-liquid and what have you um, I've always been a gadget freak um, so um, big mods and Genesis hybrids and such um, they do have a certain draw for me and I do probably have far too many of them <laughs> um, but again I'm I know lots of people who are exactly the same in their their approach to this that I am um, but overall I do this because I enjoy it um, it's it really genuinely has improved my quality of life. Now if you're a smoker listening to this and you're thinking about trying electronic cigarettes then um, obviously I would strongly recommend that you give them a try. Um, but bear one thing in mind, it really isn't um, 
it's not the same as quitting smoking. Um, I still have an addiction to nicotine. I sometimes feel a little bit uncomfortable admitting that, but it's true. Um, but that's not a problem. That's not a problem. I get the benefits of not smoking and the benefits of enjoying nicotine. Um, for me, it, it just works. In fact, I would say that vaping is better than smoking. It's not just a good substitute. It's better. Um, there's such a range of flavours of juice that can be tried. Um, so many different ways of controlling the experience of, of actually using an electronic cigarette. That, to be honest with you, smoking is just inferior by comparison. So here we are at the beginning of 2013, uh, it's the 7th of January as I record this and uh, on my Vapor Trails TV show last night we, um, we were discussing the EU Tobacco Products Directive, the revision that was published on the 19th of December last year, uh, which if it goes through unchallenged and unamended will amount to uh, a ban on vaping as we know it. And for all the reasons that I've spoken about in this little film, I cannot, for the life of me, understand how anybody could think that that's a sensible thing to do. So the, the next part of my vaping journey is quite clear. I'm going to be involved in campaigning and spreading the word and making my resistance and my feelings known about this. Um, even if uh, we get this thing kicked away, which is, let's be honest, that's, that's not a foregone conclusion. Um, we've still got the MHRA in the UK to report back in May. And 2013 promises to be quite a challenging year for those of us who enjoy electronic cigarettes, as I do. Uh, but I won't be disheartened, and uh, I shall fight the good fight. But that brings you pretty much up to date with my vaping journey. Uh, so, thank you for watching. So there you go, that's what Dave gave me um, in January 2013, how things have changed dramatically really, apart from the fact that he's now got this big bushy badger beard, as was mentioned in chat, um, but also how much the technology has changed and how much it's moved on. Um, but the sentiment in that little bit of VT um, when I was watching everything back, I spent the whole weekend watching 130 shows worth uh, and picking out little bits of ET that I thought would be would be good, would be apt for tonight. Um, I still have a bunch more, but we're going to run out of time very shortly. Um, what did you make of uh, of Dave's comments there, Gary? Like you say, they they could echo just as true sort of now as as they did then, couldn't they? Really, 
Um, we seem to have gone two years, and, and like Mark Shaw said in chat, we're still really discussing the same issue, but the uh, the involvements in, in equipment and all of that sort of stuff and, and liquid and, you know, back then, you know, sub ohm was a, uh, was, I don't know, I can't think, you know, 2013, it but it, it didn't, did it really? Yeah. So if you, if you think of, you know, where we are, you know, if you would have filmed that now, you would have been sort of, uh, you, know, you wouldn't have seen the trees behind him basically. Um, and he's now... You know, he's, he's on different liquids and all that sort of stuff. He was a he was a two liter DK four man um, back then. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's you know it, same um, same feelings. Uh, it almost feels a different era um, in, in a way. But uh, yeah, kits evolved. Um, you know, liquids evolved in a way uh, a, a lot. I think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just bonkers. You could you it could almost be filmed today, but he, he needed a, a sub home device of, of some sort, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, and a couple of people have noticed that the uh, Asda van went over the bridge twice. Um, he just used the same shot twice. We all do that sometimes <laughs> if it looks good. Um, and uh, yes, the jacket did change getting into the car, but you know the outside jacket came off and they had the inside jacket bit on. That's what it was. Yes. Anyway, um, so that was it. That was uh, the last show, the last vapor scene on Vapor Trials TV. Um, it's a bit sad, really, <laughs> um, but we've got some new stuff coming up. Uh, and like I said at the beginning of the show, Gary and I will be taking a couple of weeks off. And then um, you should be seeing what is going to be happening very, very soon. Are you excited, Gary? Mate, I, I I need a new nappy after after the band saw. Um So yeah, no, it, it it's cool. all good stuff. All good stuff going forwards as as far as as we can see. You know, it's it's going to be different. It's going to be new. It's going to be fresh. It's going to be um, good. Yeah, I wish I had that bit of VT that I've got of you saying damn good, um, but I didn't, <laughs> I don't think I put it in the list. <laughs> no, it's not in my list of VTs. Never mind. Um, so. From, I'm putting you both up on shot here, there we go. So um, tomorrow night it's The Cave with Matt and Ridian. Um, and he'll be talking about what happened today in Whitehall with the petition getting handed in. Um, we have got the totally wicked legal action in October. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens there. We'll be following that story. And we will be obviously updating our um, Facebook and Twitter feeds and all that good stuff. So keep an eye on that because you will get information about what's coming up and um, we'll be doing some melee shows, type shows um, as well. Um, so you may see me in the next couple of weeks, you may not, just because, of, like I said, I'm taking a couple of weeks off. Um, but we'll all be back very, very soon. So uh, thank you to Gary, this man here. Uh, and uh, say goodnight, Gary. Goodnight, Gary. Thank you very much, chat. Thank you for watching the show for the past three years. Uh, and yes. I hope you're going to stick with Vapor Trials TV and watch our new stuff. So uh, we will see you all very soon. Tatty bye. See you later. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and Pure Perfection e-liquid.